everyone, welcome back to my channel. We are going to continue the chocolate chase. So let's get started. The taste test. I grabbed my helmet and hopped on a new bike and started pedaling my way to trap. The city streets were crowded by now. Families strolled along enjoying ice cream and flying kites. A long line of mouselets had already formed for the egg hunt. Suddenly, my cell phone started beeping again. I tried to ignore it so I could focus on biking, but it kept ringing. Who could it be now? I pulled over to the side of the road to take a look. I had several urgent messages from my reporters about their spring festival articles. I was in a hurry, but I couldn't help myself. I replied to all of them. With that taken care of, I started pedaling furiously again. I promised Trap I would help him. I couldn't let him down. When I arrived at the Grand Hotel, my lower paws hurt because of all that biking, and my upper paws hurt because of all the typing. How was I going to be able to help both Trap and Hercule at the same time, especially with sore paws? Warily, I stowed my bike at the bike share station outside the hotel. I would just have to explain to Trap that I was in no shape to be his taster. Inside the hotel, I headed down to the kitchen where Trap was working. I had barely gotten through the kitchen doors when Trap pounced on me and shoved a chocolate bar in my snout. You're here, quick, try this super spicy chocolate I made. I think it's perfect for my chocolate egg. I took a small bite, but Trap didn't wait for my reaction. Maybe should I use this lemon chocolate instead or the garlic chocolate? Trap kept forcing me to taste crazier and crazier flavors of chocolate until finally I couldn't eat another bite. The taste test. Spicy chocolate, very surprising. Flavor two, garlic chocolate made me dizzy. Flavor three, snail droop chocolate, gross. Flavor four, almond chocolate, almost broke a tooth. Flavor five, cheesy chocolate, too sticky. Carrot chocolate, disgusting. Lemon chocolate, too sour. Lettuce chocolate, gave me a headache. Flavor nine, plum chocolate, too sweet. Eggplant chocolate, terrible. Which one did you like best, Geronimo? The garlic, the lettuce, or maybe the lemon? But my mouth was still full of chocolate and I felt slightly sick to my stomach. I feebly waved my paw at him. Oh, I see, Trap cried. They were all so amazed, Mouse, that you are speechless. That's mouse-rific. I will use all 10 flavors in my egg. I put my snout in my paws. That was going to be one strange egg. Trap looked around his workstation. Hmm, I seem to be out of almonds, he said. I'm, I'll go get some for you, I said. This was my opportunity to get back to Hercule. Before Ch Trap could disagree, I dashed back out of the kitchen. There was no time to lose. Trap's chocolate churned in my stomach as I pedaled. I hoped that he wouldn't come up with any more weird flavors while I was gone. A fabu mouse ring. In no time, I screeched to a halt. Outside Mastacular Jewels, Hercule was there waiting for me. Geronimo, what took you so long? Let's go inside. I stashed my bike outside the shop and we stepped through the floor door, front doors. I was immediately blinded by the incredible mouse sparkle of thousands of jewels. The sales mouselet scurried up and handed me a pair of sunglasses. These will protect your eyes while you admire our mouse-tacular jewelry, he said. 
The salesman said, went back to his post, and a very elegantly dressed mouse approached us. Welcome, I am Monsieur Van Gold. You must be Mr. Steelton. Miss Von Grackofer already got me. I know just what you're looking for. Actually, there's something else I, um, you could help me with first, I said. By any chance, have you recently sold an extremely pure diamond to a mouse with long blonde hair? Monsieur Van Gold shook his snout. No, not to a blonde mouselet. However, yesterday, a mouselet with very short, dark hair asked to look at the purest diamond ring we had for sale. Her Gilingan eagerly. Did she buy it? No, she didn't. He said, I can show it to you now. In fact, it will make the perfect birthday present. I'm sure Miss Von Cacklefer would love it. I gulped as we followed Monsieur Van Gold over to the counter where the special jewel was kept. Monsieur Van Gold opened a little box containing the diamond ring and turned whiter than a slice of mozzarella cheese. No! He cried. This, this is not... The real diamond. It does not sparkle. It's, it's, it's just an ordinary piece of glass. Hercule and I exchanged a knowing glance. The mouse with the short hair must have swapped the diamonds when you showed the ring to her. I said, then she used it to cut through the glass case in the mouseum to steal the mouseberg egg. Hercule added. He stroked his ears thoughtfully. Do you remember anything else about the mouse set? Monsieur Van Gold collapsed into a nearby chair. She asked me if there was a pharmacy close by. I told her there was one in the organic grocery store around the corner. He paused. I also remember that she was wearing a very expensive smelling perfume. Perfume? I repeated. Yes, it was some kind of cheddar vanilla fragrance, Monsieur Van Gold said. His description reminded me of something, but I wasn't sure what it was. Hercule had heard enough. Let's go check out that or organic grocery store, Geronimo, he said. We thanked Monsieur Van Gold, returned our sunglasses, and headed out the door. I hope you enjoyed today's chapters today. Bye!